down by 0.2%, and I guess there were a few positives on our market. First of all, we did see the Shanghai Composite stabilizing, and that was up by 0.5%. The U.S. futures virtually flat during the session. We did see a couple of big stocks going ex-dividend, and that had an impact. The consumer staple sector was the worst area on the market, but that's because West Farmers traded without its dividend today, and also in the industrial sector. Leighton's coming under pressure because it was trading ex-dividend as well. Later on in the week, we will see some bigger events coming up and we'll be watching the US interest rate meeting uh, very carefully but altogether a pretty slow day on the market the only sector to actually finish in the black was the material space and that's because it was up half a point so other sectors coming under pressure but no huge moves today outside of those ex-dividend stocks and see underpinning uh, the moves higher we've seen in the gold price can it continue um, if we have a look, it's been one of the best investments in 2014. And in fact, today on the market, gold was one place that really shone on the market. We saw the gold subsector up by 2%, gold's up by 15% in 2014. And of course, gold stocks are a leveraged play on gold. So they've done even better than that, up by 40% as a subsector for 2014. If we have a look at stocks like Perseus, Saracen, they're all up more than 100% in 2014. And I guess if we have a look at gold, it's interesting because um, although it's had one of the best performances of any asset class um, in 2014, there's relatively small interest in it. And I guess one of the overhangs for uh, rising uh, gold interest is the fact that we're still watching that unwinding of quantitative easing that's happening in the U.S. So the FOMC meeting is going to be very important this week, but also investors have been burnt over the last three years, where we have seen three consecutive years of losses for gold stocks. Last year was the worst year since 1981, with a loss of 60 the year before down 19% and the year before down 26%. But at the moment, the technicals for gold are looking good. We are coming up to the $1,400 level, which will be a key. And if we can get past that barrier, things are looking good for gold in the short term. The medium to long term picture, though, of course, very much dictated by the US dollar and what's happening in terms of the unwind with quantitative easing. Do you like it then, Lise? Well, it's been a bit of a roller coaster ride for Lendlease. We had the fire in Barangaroo uh, last week, and this week we have heard that it's a preferred tenderer uh, for this missing link between the M2 and F3. Now, this is good news because the construction division, the Australian construction division of Lendlease, makes up about 30% of earnings, and within that, 30% of earnings. I guess if we have a look at building, that makes up the bulk of the revenue there, 68%. And then if we have a look at engineering, which includes roads, that's about 27%. And then services is about 5%, which is the maintenance of things like those roads. But what we've seen in the past couple of years is that there has been a bit of a cloud over this construction unit. And that's because we have seen the mining sector slowing down. So construction demand has been slowing down in this area. So it's actually really quite nice to see Len Lease winning uh, at all. Uh, about to win a big contract like this. It is a $3 billion project value uh, for this particular project and the construction value is $2.65 billion. So at a time when we are seeing mining slowing down, it's nice to see in, uh, infrastructure ramping up for Lend-Lease and we did see the stock up by 0.9% today.